going on, y'all? So I got a little bit sidetracked with cooking, and we're going to demonstrate the different kind of art, the art of cooking. Right now, I've just got some cheese, beef, enchiladas in the oven. Cannot wait to pull them suckers out. They're looking so good. <clears throat> it's going to be tasty once they come out. So I've got another another set of art that we're going to work on today. Um, I started this over the weekend. I didn't finish it. I've only shown a couple people. And it's uh, it was originally supposed to be one of my um, reference photo pieces, but it didn't end up going off of the reference photo but maybe one portion of the sky and it, it still turned out pretty well but i've still got about a third of the painting left to do i've covered most of the canvas with paint and then um i believe i still got about yeah like i said earlier a third of the painting left after i've finished covering that so once this comes out of the oven i'll come back onto the broadcast this is just going to be a temporary one uh, right now. Just showing y'all what I'm doing. Sorry for being late. And just a way for me to kind of get y'all in, involved with more than just painting art and uh, more than just drawing and concepts. Like cooking is an art as well. And it's also very therapeutic. It's, it's something I recommend you doing if you've never done it before if you've had someone cook for you try it out yourself it's it's a good time and if you mess up that's all right you can always come back and do it again later after you've devoured your mess so that is what's going on right now so i've got about yeah they look about ready i'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it out of the oven real quick show y'all what we're working with Just used normal flour tortilla, well, jumbo flour tortillas, a can of enchilada sauce, some real lean ground beef, and look at that, it's still sizzling. And then I overloaded it with mozzarella and um, cheddar cheese. I had some avocados I was going to use, but they were rock solid when I took them out and tried to cut them, so I didn't end up doing that. And once once I've gotten all these taken care of, I'm gonna head back to the studio. And uh, we can get started painting. But right now I'm just gonna start start putting these guys in um, little containers so I can eat this throughout the week. Because I didn't realize they were gonna be this huge. So start putting in the comments down below what you think or what you think um, I should start painting. It's a big cloud scene that I've got already. And um, is that hot? Yep. Scalding. It's a really, really large cloud scene. Highly recommend putting in a waterfall somewhere in the mix, maybe maybe a body of water, we'll see. Um, I was thinking big cloud wall, so that that makes a good, uh, good waterfall scene because it would be real high up and um, real easy to maneuver around. Ooh, this is a big one. I'm gonna I'm gonna get you all over here real quick so y'all can see exactly how thick this stuff is. This one here I overloaded with like the rest of the beef. The rest of them are kind of even. So this fatty's gonna get eaten immediately. Super excited. And uh, let me know where you're watching from too. 
Let me know who's on. Spatula. Look at all that cheese. Oh my gosh. <laughs> when you're showing your, your enchiladas some love. Char uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Goodness, I almost spewed when I was talking. This has me drooling. Nice to see you again, Jennifer. That painting you did the other day, I was impressed that you copied the technique as quickly and as thoroughly as you did. It was, it was awesome. One of your, I don't, I don't know who, I can't remember her name. I think it's Stella something, but someone commented on one of my other photos the other day gave uh, some sort of prophetic word with it and it was, was kind of nice so charlotte north carolina are you yeah, isn't that close to um, Sid Roth's place? I'm pretty sure that's real close to Sid Roth's place, if I'm not mistaken. The It's Supernatural show. Get off my finger. Have you ever gotten the opportunity to go there? I know if I was living up there, I'd go there at least once. If I had the opportunity like I do now. Yes. Awesome. Everybody else that's watching, just go ahead and let me know where you're watching from. I've got Jennifer from North Carolina. I know I had a couple people here watching earlier. Right now I'm just finishing up packing my enchiladas and cleaning up my mess. Then I'll get into the studio as soon as possible. and not yet. I'm going, looks like you're meal prepping. Not intentionally. I didn't think I was going to have this much food on hand. I thought it was going to be like a lot smaller than it was based off of the ingredients. I was dead wrong. But yeah, I am meal prepping, I guess. And this is the results. That fat pill's getting in tonight. Oh, so excited. And let's see. What'd y'all eat for dinner tonight? And also, if y'all get the chance, just go ahead and share out the broadcast. I'm not in my studio yet, so I can't very well do that just yet. And that'll be the third one, I guess. Chicken. Chicken's delicious. What kind of chicken did you make? Just baked chicken? Sweet and sour chicken? Sesame.
walking over to the studio real quick. Sorry, ahead of time. I was not prepared. The estimated time that it took for me to finish up all this meal prepping was a lot more time than I was expecting. It said like 30 minutes or so. Yeah, it was It was not 30 minutes. It took me like 45 to an hour. Ugh. Here we go. Let's get all the lights on. Get my stand. And we are almost ready to go. All right, I'm gonna flip y'all around real quick. Just show y'all what we're working on. This is what I've been messing around with all weekend. I know it's a little bit uh, awkward for me holding on to because I'm trying to set up my camera as, or my camera stand as well. All right, let me flip y'all over. So this is what we've got to work with right now. Um, I was spending a great deal of time on this on Saturday night and then Sunday morning. And then I realized it was like a couple hours before church. So I had to wake up real, real, real quickly after I went to bed. So uh, I just didn't work on it the rest of the rest of Sunday so I could just rest. I can't tell you how many hours of that this one took me. And I honestly don't know how to explain the techniques I use other than I just used a palette knife. Good night. Where's my paint already? Awesome. Hmm. But I can tell you this much, my color choice, I used phthalo blue up at the top and then white and I mixed them together. And then um, as for the rest of this, I used relatively, relatively pure colors. I kept away from the whites for the most part because I wanted it to be very vibrant and uh, very, very um, contrasty. I like stark contrast and then some midtones here in the in the back but for the most part I was trying to keep it nice and thick and I was discovering a new technique but I still don't know how to explain it so I will not teach you on how to do it I could show y'all but seeing as how it's already dry there's no point so my thoughts on the rest of this piece is to leave this big space right here as as um this kind of bluish hue just like this, just a uh, blue sky that's farther away and then right up here goodness i really do wish that i didn't i had this a little bit wetter that's okay we can actually go over it so maybe have like a tree up top and then right over here i could start you doing the same technique that i've been doing here and um, spread it over here have myself a miniature waterfall of sorts and then um, have a big rock outcropping and again maybe put a tree right here we'll see but once again let me know where y'all are watching from i do enjoy when people are watching from different states, different countries. I've had someone all the way from France just randomly find out about my broadcasts. I thought that was super cool. She stayed on, she stayed following for a hot minute. I think she was also an artist. 
I am not 100% though. The language barrier was kind of thick. So there were some words that uh, she just doesn't understand with me. And likewise, I, I don't speak French at all. I spoke some Spanish back when I was in Texas. Like, at one point I was fluent, but definitely not now. I have not used it in years. And then um, for a year, about six, seven years ago, no, it was about six years ago, I was fluent at Hebrew, but I haven't spoken with anybody that speaks Hebrew. So I've lost most of that. I've got, I can uh, hold a basic, basic conversation, but that's it. So speaking French with her was like, I was, I was resorting to asking my cousin who was on the broadcast or watching the broadcast who spoke French. I was like, hey, translator, I need help. Jared does not speak French. So one thing I wanted to share with y'all, once I figure out exactly how this whole technique works, oh, oh, one second, uh, Francais, no, I don't speak French. <laughs> My French is down in the gutter, bud. <laughs> God bless you, man. Thanks for coming and watching. <laughs> but my French stanks. I don't, I don't have French. Like just the fact that I got the, I don't even know if that. Let's, let's pull this up real quick. I'm gonna see. Signorte Benice Frere. I have no. I have no idea what that means. I think that first word means sir, and that te means you. And Benici Pere, whatever that is. Maybe good something. I'm not entirely sure, man. <laughs> uh, but you cracked me up. Uh, but, yeah. Maybe, maybe I can have Nick over here as a translator one day. If I ever have that same person on, oh, Lord Brett, blah, blah, blah. Oh, so it literally means Lord Brett, God bless you, bro, in uh, French. So your, your second comment was the translation. Okay, now I'm following, I'm tracking. God bless you, or Lord bless brother. Okay, and the T means you. Okay, yep. Okay, I'm following. I'll, I'll I'll remember that. Maybe I'll maybe I'll use that if I can remember it. No. How do you? I'm not even gonna ask how to pronounce that. I'm not gonna read it and pronounce it. Um, maybe one time when we we speak over the phone or something, uh, you can let me know how it's pronounced so I'm not butchering it. That cracks me up. Oh, cool thing. Yesterday I went and uh, got the opportunity to play tennis with a buddy of mine who um, I've been training for the last six months. And um, he's been just telling me all about how he got to go over to Orlando and Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and play different college level players. And he'd, um, he actually, I think he might have actually won against one of them. And then I think the other guy who was like a division two player just spanked him. But he said he was playing the best tennis of his life, which makes sense because whenever you're playing uh, or competing, at a high level against higher level people, it forces you to take it up a notch. Hey, yes, sir. Thank you. And um, I was really excited when he told me that he was stepping it up a notch. 
And then the last night, um, I ended up playing him and and beating him. But he um, he learned a lot whenever he played me, and he's been definitely improving, especially since like six seven months ago when we first started playing together. And uh, he's been listening to everything I had to say, and it's really encouraging when I when I teach people like sports or art or just whatever I I'm doing. And they really listen, and I see the results of it, just like with Art um, and Jennifer. Um, whenever, whenever I'm doing it, demonstrating it, and then giving the pointers, and then I see the results of it, and it's almost exactly to the letter of what I've been teaching. It's just really encouraging, and it makes me happy that other people get the opportunity to be blessed by what I know and improve themselves, gain confidence in it, and uh, even, even relax. Good morning. Okay. So first line of business, I believe we're gonna start working on the clouds right here. Like I was saying, we were gonna go do earlier. I might work on, I usually work top to bottom, but I'm going in reverse order right now because I want to make sure to get this done while it's, while I can get it wet. And um, what this is going to accomplish is once I get it wet, um, I'm going to be able to use my waterfall mimicry technique, which is literally just taking a wet brush and going over it with white and maybe even yellow, we'll see. Okay, that's just dry. So I thought I had some decent paint, but I guess I was wrong. So I'm gonna have to get go and make a new batch of purple. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going into phthalo blue and crimson. And this is going to make a super dark mix. One second. Looks great so far. And new calling for Nick Serrier. Teaching basic French for conversation for the gospel. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, that would be awesome learning French. I would absolutely love that. It would take, um, actually, since I've got some time on my hands, we'll see. I, I might actually be able to to do that sometime. Nick, do you actually teach French, or are you are you fluent? Do you? I can't remember. We we've, we've spoken about this before. I just don't remember. You can confirm that for me. If you're still here, of course. Oh. My sweetie. I can teach Inspector Clouseau French. What is that? Is that like. Okay. Okay. I'm right. fully fluent in French. That's awesome. I would definitely be interested in learning French one day. And if I could do that and reach out to people that come on, just we'll say just like that, uh, that one person that came on and was a viewer for some time, that'd be super cool. I wish I would have known French back then. Um, I'm sure I could reach out to that same person. She, I don't know if she may or may not follow me still, but I haven't heard from her if she does. All right. So whenever you're painting these clouds, one thing I wanted to make sure you all understand is to keep it more towards the dark red side. Okay. 
That's the dude from Pink Pat. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Now I get it. <laughs> so you made a joke about uh, you don't speak very good French. I don't know. I don't know if that's what you were getting at, but that's... I know the Pink Panther guy that you're talking about now. I, I get the reference. And that show is hilarious. So that guy was a disaster. <laughs> but it was hilarious to watch. Alright. Okay. So one thing about this technique is it uses a lot of paint. And um, unless you're not worried about using a lot of paint, I'd recommend not, not doing the same technique. Because I, I probably went through a tube of paint just on this painting alone. Or pretty close to it. So it was brought to my attention that, um, that I used art as almost like a healing, something like healing, but um, or, uh, I, I think uh, the person that brought it to my attention was talking like I used art like therapeutically. And I'm not going to argue with that, that's actually partially true. And uh, they were saying I should probably get a course going and spread it. I don't, I don't know about making a course for healing art and stuff, but I'm not sure how I would go about that. But I'm definitely going to um, implement making a, a workshop where multiple people can join kind of like a Darren Canning class, I guess. It'll have to be over a Zoom call or something. And I'm honestly not entirely sure how these Zoom calls function, so I'll be doing a lot of research on it ahead of time. Peter Sellers, the original. I preach in that accent sometimes. Okay. I'd, I'd have to hear it to understand the accent. I, I don't know the difference between French accents yet. I can tell you the difference between English accents and Japanese accents. And um, what is it? Spanish accents, but um, not French. I would have to actually do some research on it. Okay, where's my yellow? Here we go. You know what? Actually, I'm going to put a little bit of blue over here. So all I'm doing is just taking big blocks of paint and mixing the over the top on whatever whatever um, colors I've already got on the canvas, and it just kind of blends itself. I was listening to Nick, or not Nick's, um, Marty Swanson's 
broadcast earlier with the Australian guy. I can't remember his name to save my life, but I was listening to that and it was it was really interesting. Especially about the eagle and how he just can basically gauge the temperature and wait until a little bit later in the day where it's warmer and then he just floats on the air. I was like, hmm, I knew about that. Yeah, Colonel Springer. Was he in the military at one point? I don't, I don't know. That's The guy had a lot of information. That was just awesome. And all the analogies that he was using, it, it just made sense to me. Feel don't mind sharing out the broadcast one more time. Um, I don't have my computer up, so I can't do it just yet. Matter of fact, I need to pull that up. So tomorrow, I'm going to be doing a broadcast early just because I've got, um, I've already got some stuff planned. And I, on Tuesdays, I may just, like I'm doing right now, I may just have to do um, broadcasts early because I actually do need to exercise and um, stay in shape because we do have uh, physical training tests through the military. So let's get a little bit of this purple in here on the top. So right now on my canvas or my palette, I've got a little bit of purple right here. And then I've got some yellow, which I'm going to need a lot more of because I want to create like a light brown, kind of like I've got right here in these areas. And then um, towards the top of the clouds, I'm going to be having strictly yellow, like right here. And it's a good thing these have dried because now I'm going to be able to actually implement this, the colors a little bit easier. And I'm okay with getting it a little bit dirty, because especially towards the back. If you get it a little bit dirty towards the back, it'll look all right because it'll act as a shadow. And that's where the purple comes in. GB, I don't know what that means. Oh, maybe goodbye or something. I'm not sure. Not sure. But uh, if you gotta go, take it easy, Nick. Thanks for coming on. Here we go. And then towards the back, just gets darker and darker. Just keep adding that purple color and um, keep making it keep making it a little bit darker and then you can come back work in gradually as a as the light gets um, further away. You just push it in and then make the light just real real like a gradient. And that's what I'm trying to accomplish right now.
Oh, God bless you. Oh, you too, Nick. Thank you, Bobby. So we've got a little space in between here where it's um, just completely blank canvas. And what I have is just the solid white or solid yellow color and then some orange towards the bottom or in the middle. And then I've got crimson and then complete purple right here. Now what we could do is take the, um, take the kind of muddied color, stick it in between, and then just have an even further gradient dark work and dark and work outwards with it so it becomes one hue or we can have just a little bit of that dark purple color right here start mixing it upwards and then add a little bit more of the yellow over here and have um, kind of like these clouds we've got over here where it's real bright in one section and then it goes darker and then it goes real bright again just have uh, broken up So I'm going to just mess around with the darker colors right here, and then we'll work in. And I'm going to shape out the clouds too. I'm going to carve out some of the yellows and purple in the browns here by using purple. Start darker where you think your colors would have a lot less light and work in, and you can cut them. You can cut across them, you can cut the back of them, and shape them out. Just like this. Just make it darker, darker. Go back into purple. You can make it even further as well. Just cut out shapes using your knife. It almost looks like an ice cream scoop. <laughs> and the more you kind of come back up and pull it down, the more um, all your colors end up blending together. That's one thing you need to be cognizant of. If you're trying not to mix it and muddy it up, which I am intentionally trying to muddy it up, I like muddy look. It gives um, some nice mid-tones. But if you're not trying to do that, and you're trying to keep it nice and pure like we have over here, then don't constantly go back and forth. All right, now to go back into the yellow and we're gonna do the mixture over the top. I'm just kind of using a stamping, kind of like a stamp technique, where I'm just pressing it and going up and down. And I've got a real bendy knife. Don't do that if you don't have a real bendy knife, because you can, you will break your knife. I've done it before. It's a good blending technique, but unless you have one of these knives that are bendy, don't do it.
Good evening, Allison. Uh, that's an awesome painting so far. Yeah, I think it's turning out kind of nice. It's got a lot of texture up top, and it gradually gets less and less texture the more we get down. Goodness. But it's turning out pretty nice. I like it too. We could cut this one off just a little bit. So one thing that I'm planning on doing is um, once I once I get the funds, I'm going to invest in a printer, like a real nice uh, painting printer. One second. Um, let me push this up real quick. Your art is so so incredible. Thank you. I've seen you a couple of times on my in my comments. I don't remember where I recognize you from, or where I've seen you from, or if you've heard about me through a friend. That'd be awesome either way. But welcome to the broadcast, and thank you for the compliment. But one thing I was actually intending on doing is investing in a nice like photograph printer that I could um, sell my my print or my prints prints of my paintings for about I think a hundred or two hundred dollars. That way people who can't afford originals they have a chance to at least get something. And it would help me just um, be able to get better equipment for the studio for everybody to watch loving colors. Awesome. Me too. I'm staying away from whites. That's the reason they're turning out real, real vibrant. That's the key. If you want it to be vibrant, stay away from white. Vibrant is not white. It's pure color. And um, mixing of reds, yellows, and blues together. And the darker you want it, the more uh, red and blue you want in there. And if you're using phthalo blue, that makes it doubly dark because that's an extremely powerful color. And this almost black light color down here, here uh, let me take your comment down. But this black light color right here, it's actually just purple. That's all it is. And it's because of crimson and phthalo blue that I'm using right now. Oops, this is crimson. That's just purple. That's the black ish purple color that I've been using. So there you have it. There's my, there's a secret technique that I did not necessarily want to divulge, but I'm gonna give it to y'all for free. That one, that's a technique that one of my old mentors taught or former art teachers taught me. At least, um, at least getting the black color. Good evening, Sheila, it's good to see you. Thanks for jumping on. So right now I'm kind of just taking the edge of the knife or the point and I'm sticking or I'm, I'm kind of going over all the different white points. There are a lot of grains that are just not covered in paint. And I'm kind of trying to fine point it, make sure they're all covered. Because uh, once I'm finished with this painting, I much prefer the whole thing be covered. Now, you can leave them open. Yeah, crimson's a lot of fun to work with. You can leave these little grainy spots open and it looks painterly as one of my, like a few of my mentors have taught me and I'm just like, when it's bigger, I don't want it to be grainy and have openings because when it dries, I don't know, just, I feel like it looks better when it's completely covered, but that's just hundred percent me. It's all personal preference. So on the smaller paintings, I would recommend that because it actually does look pretty nice on the smaller ones. But on the bigger ones, 
Not so much. No. I'd keep that. I'd keep all the all those grains and all the whites covered as much as you can, if you can. If you can't, that's all right. I was originally trying to work off of a reference photo on this one, but I didn't end up following it at all, except for maybe this this portion for the color scheme. And I was not at all disappointed with that. It ended up being very nice. Oh, let's see, I saw a comment. One as far as buying canvas, one canvas or multiple? I have yet to buy paint and other supplies. Well, that's one step in the right direction. Even if it's one step at a time, you'll you'll eventually get all the supplies. Um, I mean, in worst case, if you don't want to use brushes, you can use a palette knife. This is what I'm going to be working on or working with for a while because I've been having a lot of fun with palette knives. Now. There is going to be an exception on this one in particular because I'm going to try a waterfall technique. I'm not going to have to explain it because it, the technique itself is very self-explanatory. Uh, I know, I know. And Jennifer says, whoop, I don't know what for. I can't remember. So on any spots, that you find yourself with uh, colors that aren't cooperating or find yourself with um, those grains that aren't cooperating with you, you can just take whatever color is there and go as close as possible to it and just kind of mash it in there. And if it doesn't work, just leave it. It's kind of a nitpicky nitpicky thing I, I'm doing right now. Not necessarily perfection, just I don't enjoy looking at it near as much, unless the whole thing's covered. There we go. And then one thing you can do, just back and forth in it, and you can break it up as well. You can take it into another dark spot and just kind of pull it around, shape it, about your clouds. Still have to dig out my paintbrushes, knives, and paint. I am procrastinating. Well, you got time right now. Go, go grab them. Have some, come have some fun. Paint, paint along with me. What's up, and yeah. No more procrastination. Let's let's get some let's get some painting done. Let's have some fun. I found procrastination to be one of my biggest enemies. If I don't paint now, I won't paint ever. That's literally how I operate. And 
I've been getting in the mentality, okay, I'm done procrastinating. I'm going to paint now. And that's why I live stream every day because I force myself to be in the studio. I force myself to be working. And, and I don't mean like working a job. Jobs are necessary for living temporarily. And you know what? I won't go into that subject because I can talk about that for hours. But in a nutshell, um, work is something I enjoy. Job, jobbing, that's not something I enjoy. It's something that I find a necess like a, almost a necessary evil until I can sustain myself well enough without having to work or without having to do a job. So once my art, it takes off a little bit more than it does already and I can sustain myself, I'll probably end up leaving the military if I don't retire before then. And uh, there we go. Let's, let's give this guy a little bit more of a, a dip. We'll have him come down like this. Give him a nice texture. Yeah. Come over the backs of these guys. Pull out that yellow paint. Be sure to take into consideration their shape and form. In my case, there's an angle that I'm trying to pull. Um, you can strip away the paint and just go back to the base layer, which is crimson. And the whole mashing thing, it, one second, the finger paint. I also have little kids who love to paint too. Get them involved. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I understand if it's uh, too much of a hassle. Finger paint. Nice. Yeah, pretty much. Why, hello, Lewis, my dear friend. He's a buddy of mine in the military. He's a, I don't remember. I think he's in either. Oh, no, he was not. He's not in Alaska. He's in, I think, New Mexico or somewhere around there. But he's a good buddy of mine. We used to hang out a lot in the dorms back when I was living on base. And we'd watch like different Marvel and DC things together. And he's a, I think he streams video games now. And he's got a set of twins on him. He's got he's got some kids. They're awesome. They're adorable. And let's see what Bobby Joe, my little my littles are commanding my presence. Blessings to you. Be sure to post your finished work. I will. <laughs> Go get your littles. By the way, I started my thing for gaming. If you ever want to come watch me, yeah, just post it, man. I'll, I'll come in and watch. Whenever I'm not painting or doing work or cooking like I was earlier, speaking of cooking, I'm looking at that fat pill on the other side of this table. I made some enchiladas today. And um, I started the stream based off of the enchiladas, and I'm looking forward to eating those. It's going to be a good time once I get to them. Mm. Making me hungry. But yeah, for anybody who who wants to, he he plays video games, and um, he live streams those. So go go check him out if you're interested in video games. He's one of the nicest dudes I've ever met in the military. 
Carrie.dn. There are very few that are as as uh, nice a dude as he is. So whenever you've got a big glop of high or medium tones right here, you can also take your knife and um, one second, he said something. Sounds good. I'll PM you later or give you a call. That sounds good, man. So one, one thing that you can do uh, with any of these, honestly, if you want to cut into these highlights and this requires the tech, the, uh, the paint to be wet as it is, what you could do is to take your knife and um, dig into whatever spot you want to separate clouds, like right here, for instance. I'm going to make this one stand out a little bit more by putting some shadows behind it. By using purple. And it mixes in and makes a nice dark brown. And you can do the same thing all the way back if you want. And it works wonders. It makes an extremely dark contrast too. So if you're not trying to go for major contrast, don't do it. I don't care about typical, typical rules of art. I bend them, I break them all the time mainly because I know how they work. And I know what I, I enjoy painting. So once you've learned all sorts of different rules for, um, for painting and art, that's when I recommend breaking them. Once you understand them and you understand what works, and what doesn't, or what you like painting, that's when you break them. Absolutely learn what these rules are and then break them. Okay, so shadow, shadow, light. Here we go. We'll put one right here, just a little tiny highlights. Let it be mesh. Just go back over them and kind of tone it down. And then the more you go over it, the more it tones it down. You on your new kit? Nope. Mm -mm. I found out that the new camera um, can only stream from Vimeo. So I'm only going to be using that whenever I'm traveling around and I don't have my laptop on hand because it's super small. I'll show you actually. I've actually got it right here. This thing's awesome. Don't get me wrong. It's 100% awesome. I'm using my iPhone right now until I get another camera. I'm going to have to invest in another one that can attach as a webcam because I'm using StreamYard. And I have my logo up here in the corner, here, right here. We, um, I got with a graphic designer and a musician and I made a music video. However, because um, I don't know if there's a compatibility issue or if it takes too much space, but the, the intro video wouldn't stay on my, um, or wasn't, wasn't able to be found. So I guess it had too much information or too many I don't know took too much storage space to use so I couldn't use my intro video and this it uses a it uses an app called Vimeo and yeah it allows me to see the comments but I can't connect it to my laptop and go scroll through all the comments which is a problem 
I want to be able to scroll through comments just like this and see what everybody is saying, see what, and be able to highlight it in case, you know, if anybody is looking for a certain comment. I like to highlight people, let them know I'm talking to them. And the StreamYard program does that, but it's not compatible with anything but Vimeo. And I was like, you know what, that stinks, but I'm going to keep it just in case I'm streaming outside of um, my normal studio. Which stream stuff? StreamYard. That's a good question. I'm using StreamYard's uh, streaming software. It's um, it's actually super useful. It's I mean, it, you can do it for free for 20 hours, and you're not going to be able to have like an intro video. You'll have this little icon for StreamYard's logo up at the top, which I'm not a fan of. And you'll only be able to stream to one platform, so Facebook or YouTube, and only one page. Right now, I'm streaming to my YouTube and I'm streaming to my Facebook page. By the way, I'm going to put that up. If y'all don't mind, go ahead and um, here, let's see if I can copy and paste it. No, this is my channel. If y'all don't mind, just go into the channel and subscribing in, a, in another, I don't know, another tab or something. Eventually, I'll have a custom URL that's a lot shorter for everybody to go check out my YouTube on. And eventually, um, I would like to get monetization for it so I can post all my videos on YouTube, take them off of my Facebook so I don't have to worry about space and storage, which I actually do have to do maintenance on regularly, but not as much as I used to because I'm not streaming live using Facebook's profiles. So the storage space isn't going directly to my phone. It's going to my laptop. So that's one of the pluses about using StreamYard is it doesn't necessarily use um, your phone's phone space. It uses your computer space. Here we go. By the way, who's still watching? You try OBS streaming software? No, I have not. Um, I have not. I was going to upgrade this one to the $50 one a month. Eventually, liking the painting, by the way. Thank you. I was going to upgrade this or the um, the streaming software that I'm using right now to the $50 a month one. That way I could you know, go back and implement a little bit more. Oh, what was I going to say? That way I can implement more streaming platforms. Like I could put it onto my art page. I could put it on my private page or my, my personal profile page. I could use um, my YouTube channel. I could develop a, still here, looking great. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I could put it on my YouTube page. I'm gonna eventually make a Twitch account just to see how how well it will, it will manage over there. We'll see, I'm not entirely sure how many people watch art over there. I've heard a lot based off of um, a couple people over at GameStop and places like that. Yeah, let's get a little bit more of that darker colors.
Orange, more of that crimson, the yellow. Trying to get a brownish color with more of the warm tones over here. kind of flatten it out make sure I've covered a lot of this canvas now there I'm even going to tap it with a little bit of this brown color here Yeah, I was going to do a twitch. Um, I really do. I think that would be pretty useful. Just getting it out there. Just getting my name out there. But one thing that I'm going to do here pretty soon is actually start up some classes. Let's get some orange in there. I've had multiple people tell me I should start doing classes and um, I'm going, I'm actually going to start developing a lesson plan here tonight. Just so that I can actually pull that off once I've, once I've done the proper research on like a Zoom call. I, I only want to have like maybe 10 people on my on my workshops at a time because I want to be able to talk to everybody at once and be sure I can get some quality time explaining different techniques and if they don't understand they can actually chime in and raise their hand or something or and I can look directly at their paintings and uh, help them out. Let's break this up just a little bit. All right, now for the mountain part. We're gonna have, I don't know about a, okay, one second. Gotta go, conference OSI, laters, BTW, awesome idea. Thank you. You know what, I really wanted to go to the OSI. I don't have the money right now though. Actually, I might, once I get that sold. What time is it right now? I don't have my laptop quite running yet. Let's let's get some. So we've got my phthalo blue, and I'm gonna get some yellow, just a little bit, not too much. Actually, we'll put on all this purple that I've already got mixed on. We'll just put this on right now. Let's 
So I'm trying to strip it and make it look real thin. Or just thick enough to where it's covering the entire canvas. Or at least the bottom portion. And this is just to make like a mountain. Kind of like a rocky type mountain. In fact, I ran out of my paint. So the purple I'm making right now, I'm keeping it more towards the red side because I want the yellow to shine forth and make it a little bit more 7.20 your time. Well, right now I'm on central time zone. Uh, what, what time are you basing it off of? Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Your eastern time more than likely since you're North Carolina, right? Thank you. So that would make it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to take this kind of dark purple color that's more towards the red side and I'm kind of shaping it up and be sure whenever you're making these, these shapes make sure it's real thin so that when you come back over and highlight it you know, they, they look brown towards you want a warmer brown because this kind of light is warm. It's not, it's not a cooler color. And I will be having a tree up on the top too. I'm going to have to finish up the clouds up here later. We can put a blue over there. So more towards the blue side is what we're going to do over here. Actually, you know what? I could just make the rest of this just all like this blue sky and just right behind here. Just maybe kind of let this fade out here shortly. I'm going to finish up this portion. So one thing I'm considering right now is the shape of the, the mountains and that I want this portion to look like it's in front of this portion. I know y'all can't see what's going on because it just looks black in the camera. But eventually it will shape up. I'm going to put a little bit more of the highlights here, almost like a glow around here with a warm type of light and then it's going to be real bright towards the edges of this guy right here and then same with um, this mountain but it's going to be even brighter on here since it's closer make sure you're putting it on the thin whenever you're trying to shape it up. 
that way you can come back with the highlights and make them real thick and textured because it's a lot harder to thin or add thicker or add thinner paint sorry add thicker paint to thick paint so you start off thinner and then work up to thicker You can even just take a little bit of the crimson as well and add it to the purple and pull it down to make it even warmer so that when you come back and highlight it, it'll be even warmer light. But that's just my personal taste. You don't have to do that. You can just leave it real dark and kind of pretty similar color scheme if you want.
I'm uh, just going back to this guy, touching up all the different spots where I've got um, empty canvas space. Trying to make sure that gets covered as much as possible. I'm not going to be able to get everything because it all looks almost the same. But that is all right. I'm just touching, touching and letting everything just fall off the knife or pull off. And it's good to have a lot of texture over here too. Keep it nice and thick. Try not to spread it like I just did there. At least not too much. Looks, looks almost done. How long did this take you to paint so far? Man, I don't know. It took me at least eight hours. Um, I think I started at around six or six or seven on Sunday or Saturday night. And I worked until like two in the morning. And I've been working on it for about two hours now, or maybe about an hour and a half now. So probably about eight or nine hours. That's if my math is even correct right there. I don't, I don't think it is. So I'll have a nice big tree right here, and I'm going to try to, you know what, I could actually go around here as well. With, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. So for this part, you can spread it a little bit, just to avoid touching the yellow. because you do not want the blue and the yellow to mix because that'll make a nice a green color I'm trying to keep this mostly white or towards the whiter side intentionally so that um, I can keep it brighter the more it goes further away. Hey, Dion. 
So the further down it gets, the more white you'll see, or the more towards the white side it will be. And the reason for that, whenever you look at the sky outside and you've realized, oh, wait a second, the closer to the horizon line it gets, the less blue or the less dark blue it will be. But the more you look upwards towards the sky, towards space, it reflects a lot more blue. So that's that's the logic behind it, if you're ever wondering about that. You can add some green to the sky, some yellows to your blue. Just a little bit, just like I've done up here. Just like a hair. Because you will see that sometimes in the uh, afternoon skies, but not 100% of it. Not 100% of the time. And right now I'm kind of spreading out the dark spots. So it looks like maybe there are clouds back there, but the atmosphere is very thick. I'm going to have a nice big tree right over here hanging. Maybe we'll have, you know, I just had an idea. So I'm going to paint all of this with blue and white and stuff, but then I'm going to kind of scrape it with a knife eventually. But I'm going to have like a tree coming over and around like, like that. But I'm going to have like water pouring out of the tree. Instead of having a waterfall, we're going to have a tree fall, like a tree waterfall. I've actually seen that, like a picture of water pouring out of a tree, and it was natural. And it was the coolest thing I've ever seen. So I'm going to actually work that in. Once I have finished making the sky in the background for it. We'll just put a couple pieces right here and there just to cover the canvas. But ultimately, I'm going to cover a real big spot right over here with a tree. What do y'all think? That's a cool idea. Are you heading home, man? Yeah, go for it. I'll s uh, just shoot me a message. Let me know when you're done. I'll come show you some sport. I'm gonna probably be painting a lot tonight after this, but once you get uh, once you get home, I'll come watch you for a bit. As much time as I can afford, I will come and show you some support. See you in a few, my friend.
so I done goofed, guys. My phone ended up dying, and I completely blanked on it. In the meantime, I'm going to take a bite of this fat pill of an enchilada. Oh, man. Yep, that was a good move on my part. That is so good. So out of curiosity, who is still watching? How many people did I lose? And who stayed? By the way, y'all, have y'all ever seen the Chosen series? It's a, it's a it's a newer, well, not even a newer TV show, but it's a show that recently came out within the last year or two, and it's really, really good. I highly recommend watching it if you have not already. I just finished the first season of it last night, and I was thoroughly impressed with how they portrayed the characters and how well they portrayed or caught the emotions of the scenes and what it might have been like while Jesus is like is um, developing his ministry. It was really something else. Oh, you're still here. Awesome. We have exactly what? So, not this painting, but the next one I will be painting for someone that's over at OSI. Or at least who I suspect is at OSI. Um, I'm not going to name names because I don't actually have their name. But I don't think that um, they're going to be expecting it. One second. Yeah, it's a really good show. I highly recommend watching it. 
Um, unfortunately, the first season is the only one that's available right now. And if you wanted to support it, you can um, you can pay like however much money forward to help them out because they're a fan funded series. And on top of that, they're extremely good at capturing the, the essence of the scenes and what it might have been like back then. I recommend um, at least checking out the series. The, you can get it on the, um, the Chosen app, the first season. You can get it for free and just watch it free of charge. Eventually, I'll probably help pitch in and um, help them develop their next series or their next season. Because it was that good. It moved. It definitely moved me. It was awesome. Rip all this off real quick. Because I know I'm going to come back later over the top of that. So what I did, I just ripped off all the paint with a palette knife in this area because I'm I'm gonna put um, this dark paint, the purple paint over the top of that anyways. I'm going to have water coming out of it like this. Kind of spewing out forward like this and then right down. All right, I think I'm about done for tonight. I'm going to actually have to take a break and eat. And um, I will probably be on around 4 p.m. tomorrow, East or Central time. If y'all want to join, you're more than welcome to. If not, that is all right as well. But from now on, I think about, I think 4 p.m. Tuesdays is when I'm going to start streaming and then once work starts up again, it'll probably just be later in the evenings because I've got exercise, I've got tennis going on then. 
And uh, if you all have any more comments, questions, or concerns, just let me know. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pray for those who are going to be watching later. If y'all haven't had the opportunity to accept God in, or accept Jesus into your life, um, I'd like to give y'all the opportunity to um, to accept him into your life. He's he's the reason why my sanity is still here. He's the whole reason why I'm able to love people like I do. And I'm constantly trying to be more like him. And um, if y'all would like to, go ahead. If not, just close out the tab now. But Jesus, I realize that I've been a sinner. I've messed up in my lifetime. And um, you said in your word that you are the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one comes to you or comes to the Father except through you. Well, I don't want you in my life. I want you turning turning my life upside down and to be redeemed. Forgive me for all of my sins. I, I'm so sorry. No, I ask that you come into my heart right now and um, make me clean by your blood. Thank you for making me clean. Thank you for coming into my life. And I give you my life. I give all of it to you. Every last aspect. Did you say Amen. So, y'all have a blessed evening, and uh, thanks for joining. Bye.